Welcome to chapter 2. Today we're going to talk about section 2.1, solving one-step equations. And our goal for this lesson is that we can solve one-step equations using one variable. So our first vocab term is going to be equivalent equations. And you've heard this word before in last chapter. An equivalent equation is an equation that has the same solution as another equation. So you always have a pair of equivalent equations. And remember, equi just means equal. So same solutions equal to each other. And we're going to be looking at four different properties of equality. The first one is the addition property. And using this property, what you do is you just add the same number to both sides. Remember, you have to be equal to both sides of the equation. So you need to, if you add one to the first side, you have to add one to the second side, etc. So here is the first example. As you can see, there's a subtraction of, of 3 going on. In order for us to get the x by itself, aka isolating the variable, we'll talk about that in a moment, we need to do the opposite operation. So we have minus 3, what's the opposite of minus 3? And that's plus 3. And that's how we would get rid of the 3's on the left, and we'd have the x by itself. And I won't go into solving that. We'll do that in the examples in a couple seconds. Now, the opposite of the addition property would be the subtraction property. And the subtraction property of equality, what you're doing is you're subtracting the same number from each side of the equation. So an example of this would be x plus 4 equals 5. In order to get rid of the x, the x by itself and get rid of that positive 4, we need to subtract 4. Remember, you always have to do the opposite. Minus 4, minus 4, those go away. Now the x is by itself. So those are the first two properties. And now we're going to go on to talking about isolating the variable. In order for us to solve an equation, we must isolate the variable. That means getting the variable all by itself. You may have heard of isolation uh, before when somebody's put into a corner for timeout or something like that. They are all by themselves in that corner. So very similarly, when you isolate the variable, you're getting that letter by itself on one side of the equation. And how do we do that? Well, what we do is we use the properties of equality. We're learning those right now. And we also use inverse operations. And inverse operations undo another operation. So you just saw when we use the addition property, we were getting rid of subtraction. When we use the subtraction property, we were getting rid of addition. And those are two inverse operations that you want to write down, plus and minus. And the other ones that we're about to talk about are multiplication and division. And feel free to pause the presentation at any time to catch up. Here's our first example. We have x plus 13 equals 27. This is a one-step equation. We need to get rid of that positive 13. And the way that we do that is we think to ourselves, what is the opposite of adding? And that is subtraction. So we need to subtract 13 from both sides. Minus 13, minus 13. Well, what happens over here? They cancel out. So now x is by itself. That was our goal. And what is 27 minus 13? That's 14. x equals 14. And I want to show you a quick check method. This is always wise to do. The way that you check is you plug in your answer for the letter. So we're going to plug in the 14 for the x, 14 plus 13, what does that equal? And you get 27, and that's what we started with. So that's done. In example 2, we have the equation negative 7 equals b minus 3. We need to get the b by itself. Right now it's b minus 3. So what's the opposite of minus 3? That is plus 3. And what is negative 7 plus 3? Well, the 7 is bigger and it's negative, so that means our answer is going to be negative. And what is 7 minus 3? That is 4. So the answer is negative 4. Now let's check to make sure it works.
negative 4, plugging the negative 4 in for the b, minus 3 equals negative 7. Yes, it works. All right, we're halfway there. Now let's learn about the multiplication property of equality. What's really nice about these names is that the operation is in the name itself. So a multiplication property means we're going to be multiplying. So here's an example, x over 3 equals 2. What operation is going on right now? That bar right there means division. That fraction bar means division. So what's the opposite of division? Multiplication. So what we need to do is multiply both sides by 3. What you do to one side, you have to do the other. So let's cross out the 3's on the left, because 3 divided by 3 is just 1. X is by itself, and you get 6. The division property is the last one. Guess what we're going to be doing? Dividing. So we're dividing each side of an equation by the same number, and it should not be 0 because we cannot divide by zero, that is a no-no. And remember that division is just the inverse or opposite of multiplication, and that's one of your blanks, inverse or opposite. You can write both or either, whichever one makes more sense to you. Here's an example of using this property, 5x equals 20. Well, when you don't see an operation between those two, assume it's multiplication. So we need to undo multiplication by division. So we divide both sides by 5 and cross out the 5's. That's just 1. And x equals 4. Okay, let's use those. Example 3, we have 4x equals 6.4. We need to get rid of that 4. Right now, they're multiplying the 4 and the x, so we need to divide by 4. And that's 1. x equals 1.6. In example 4, we have x over 4 equals negative 9. Right now, division is happening between the x and the 4, so we need to do the opposite of division, which is multiplication. So let's multiply both sides by 4. These cancel out because that's just 1. x equals whatever negative 4 times negative 9 times 4 is. Well, is it positive or negative? The answer is negative. And 9 times 4 is 36. When the coefficient of the variable is a fraction, we can use the reciprocal of the fraction to solve the equation. Now remember, coefficient is just the number in front of the letter. So for this example below, 4 fifths is the coefficient and m is the variable. And as you can see, that 4 fifths is a fraction. The way that we're going to solve this problem is by using the reciprocal of that 4 fifths. Now remember, reciprocal is just another fancy word for flip. So what is the flip of 4 fifths? And by flip, I just mean the 4 goes to the bottom, the 5 comes to the top. The reciprocal of 4 fifths is 5 fourths. So we're going to multiply both sides by 5 fourths. Technically, that 28 is over 1. When you don't see a number, underneath, assume it's a 1. Now let's multiply. The 5's cancel out, that's just 1, and the 4's cancel out, that's also 1. The m is by itself now, which is very good. And take a look at the 28 and the 4. What is 28 divided by 4? That's 7. So this becomes a 7, and this becomes a 1. And what is 7 times 5? That is 35. So m equals 35. And our last example that we're doing together is a real-life application problem. It is about birds, so let's read it together. Toucans and blue-yellow macaws are both tropical birds. The length of an average toucan is about two-thirds of the length of an average blue and yellow macaw. Toucans are about 24 inches long. What is the length of an average blue and yellow macaw? 
So first we need to identify our variable. Now look at the question at the very end. It's asking for the length of the blue and yellow macaw. So that means we're looking for length. And how about let's just use an L. L equals length of macaw. Now, let's identify the really important information in the problem. Length of an average toucan is about two-thirds of the length of macaw. Toucans are about 24 inches. What is the length of the macaw? Okay, so now let's write a little uh, model for this. Toucan length. Toucan length is two-thirds of macaw length. So I just took that first or second sec sentence and put it as a little model and we're going to follow that with some variables. Now toucan length, we are told that the toucan is about 24 inches is means equals of means multiplication and length of macaw is L. Now as you can see we have the two-thirds we need to get the two-thirds to the other side but in order to do that we need to multiply by the reciprocal or the flip. The flip of two-thirds is 3 over 2. So we're going to multiply both sides by 3 over 2. Remember, there's just a 1 underneath the 24. Now, on the right side, the 2 and the 2 cancel out, and a 3 and a 3. So now the L is all by itself. Take a look at the left side now. There's a 24 up top. There's a 2 on bottom. What is 24 divided by 2? That's 12. So the 2 goes away. That becomes a 1, and this becomes a 12. Last step is we just need to multiply 3 and 12, and that is 36. So length equals 36 and it's measured in inches. So that is the length of the macaw. You can wait for the 2.1 lesson check until we do the problems together during class.